Well, good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be back in Kazan for my third time. I feel like a local now. Um, thank you very much to Rosa and to Idar for inviting me here. This is my, as I said, my third time. I was here last year for the first time for the forum and then back in October to work with teacher educators here and it's a great privilege to be back today again. And today I'm going to provide some sort of a background context for some work that we're taking forward in Scotland uh, uh, in terms of reviewing our professional standards and working with Rosa and uh, our colleagues in Portugal through Maria Flores to try and build a multi-country multi study on teaching professional standards. And the format that I wanted to use for today, I've drawn to, to structure what my presentation today um, uh, a, a document that we use in Scotland for school self-evaluation to help schools develop their self-evaluation and we uh, advise teachers and school leaders who are using this to look inwards, look outwards and look forwards to look inwards to knowing ourselves through effective self-evaluation, to look outwards to learn from what happens elsewhere to challenge our thinking and to look forwards to exploring the future and what that might hold for today's learners. So that's the, 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 the format that uh, I'm, I'm intending to take for today's presentation. Just a little bit to say, it's a great honour to follow a fellow Irish person and when I give international presentations I always put up a map of the United Kingdom and I do that for several reasons. Partly it's because although I work in Glasgow I'm actually Irish. I always want people to see where I'm from so I'm from that little bit there called Northern Ireland. But there's another purpose in putting a map of the United Kingdom up because it's quite easy in international conferences for people to talk quite casually about the UK education system. And I want to emphasize is that it's not one education system in the United Kingdom. In fact, there are four quite distinctive education systems and, and Ireland could be a fifth within the British, British Isles. They're all quite distinct. They all have different features. They all put different emphases on, on, on different aspects of education and teacher professionalism. And we would say that the Scottish approach has some fairly distinctive features. And so in Scotland, we would talk about teacher education rather than teaching teacher training. And that relates to the model of the teacher that, 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 that we have constructed. We talk about initial teacher education and we talk about career long professional learning. So these are some of the terms that I'm going to be referring to in the course of, of, of my presentation this morning. As I have mentioned, we'll be talking about initial teacher education, we talk about continuing professional development for teachers, we talk about CLPL, it's the word that our teachers, the, the acronym our teachers are using every day now, career long professional learning. In Scotland, teachers' professionalism is overseen by a regulatory body called the General Teaching Council. It's one of the eldest, oldest teaching councils in the world. And finally, a, a major report that Ian Mender has already referred to earlier this week that has really changed the way we approach teaching and teacher education in Scotland, a report called Teaching Scotland's Future. And you'll hear a little bit more about that today. In Scotland, I think we are uh, quite unique. There are several other education systems that have a, a, a suite of professional standards. In Scotland, we introduced a, a suite of professional standards in 2012. Previously, we only had two professional standards, but now we have a set of professional standards that covers the career pathway from when a, a, a beginning teacher enters the profession as a new student teacher right through to headship. And so we've got this pathway that covers a career trajectory in, in teacher education. So we have a standard for provisional registration at the end of the initial teacher preparation, a standard for full registration when somebody has entered the teaching profession and completed their, their uh, induction year, a standard for career long professional learning, a standard for middle leaders in schools, and then for our principals and head teachers, a standard for headship. <laughs> we had a technology failure last year as well, if I recall. Just, <laughs> yeah. 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 No? It doesn't move. Mm -mm. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. The important point to note, and the reason why on my first slide I put up the, the, the question for teaching professional standards moving compl beyond compliance, is a challenge that we're currently grappling with in Scotland is how do we move beyond using standards in a way that forces teachers to be compliant to them? And in Scotland, although I've shown you previously the suite of professional standards that, that map out the, the, the teacher's career, what they should know and be able to do throughout their career, the, t the, the professional standard, which is the legal standard, the one by which teacher competence is measured, is the standard for full registration. And that's clearly documented in our, in our GTC documentation where they say the standard for full registration, it's the gateway for entry into the profession, the benchmark of teacher competence for all teachers. And therefore it constitutes the standards of capability in relation to teaching, uh, I'm mindful of uh, equalities legislation, but it, it, it gives that uh, standard that uh, must be achieved in relation to learners, parents, the profession in itself. That's an important point, that, that, that that's the legal standard that all teachers in Scotland must meet, including head teachers. And let me give you an example of this problem. Last week I was working at the General Teaching Council in Scotland where I'm part of the review group for the, the suite of professional standards. And in our strategic group there were two head teachers who are also heads of professional associations and trade unions and they were debating the issue with us about this problem if this is the legal benchmark they those people as head teachers and as heads of professional associations for school leaders would not be able to meet that standard because they're no longer teaching in the classroom and so if we were to measure their competence against that standard they would not be able to demonstrate that they were achieving that standard. So that's a real problem for us in terms of how do we actually move beyond compliance? How do we move beyond using standards simply to demonstrate practice at a particular time and in a particular place in a particular context? How do we move beyond using it in a regulatory way? And for us in Scotland, also thinking about maybe we need actually to think about using the standards and the levels of competence right across the career teacher's career uh, rather than just focusing on the standard for full registration. And it's an important question this moving beyond compliance because we've already heard throughout this week and from Connor this morning about the changing nature of the teaching profession and the changing nature of teacher education and trying to understand what does a career in teaching actually look like. Because if, if we say that, and we agree in, in, in Scotland for now, that the, the standard for full registration is the entry into the teaching profession, if somebody comes into the teaching profession when they're 20 or 21 and they remain in the teaching profession until they retire, then that's a long time to be at that same level, that entry level of development and competence. And I think there's a lot of literature that we can look to and refer to to be informed about what does a, a career in teaching look like. There's a vast literature coming from Lorty in 1975, Sykes and All in 1985, Herbermann's work 1993, Fassler and Christiane in 1992, and I'd also say Maria Flores work uh, in more recent years. I refer often to Chris Day's work and, and, and two projects that mapped out the career phases of, of, of teachers based on a, on a major research project and they looked at the different phases that you could uh, identify through teachers career through a career in teaching that spanned almost 20 years and you can see those phases mapped out there. And so the question that arises from the team that I'm working with uh, when looking at, the, at these career phases is if this is a, a career phase, a career life cycle of the, of, of the teacher, how can teachers maintain their professional competence and not just maintain it but actually develop and become even more accomplished as they grow as a professional educator? So how then can they move beyond compliance? And I would say that professional standards have an important role to play in this, but there are two premises that we really need to, 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 to grapple with. And part of that relates to the model of the teacher, and part of that relates to how teachers are understood. 
And I think Ian very, very uh, succinctly outlined the work that he had undertaken when he was a, a professor at University of Glasgow, trying to look in the literature at the different models of the teacher. And if you recall from the first day of the conference, Ian I'd had identified from the research that there were different models, the effective teacher, the reflective teacher, the inquiring teacher, the transformative teacher. And so a question when adopting and using standards is to ask really what is the model of the teacher that underpins the professional standards and how are standards understood? What purpose are they designed for? How are they understood and how are they used? And quite often they're used in very different ways and interpreted very differently depending upon the different audiences and the different users. But in Scotland, we have attempted to try and define the model of the teacher that underpins the, the professional standards and underpins our approach to education and to teacher education. For those of you who attended the CPD course that I had the privilege to, to, to work on here in Kazan in October, this will be a phrase or a, a, a quotation that's very familiar to you. And this was uh, from the report on Teaching Scotland's Future by, by Graham Donaldson. And I think he really captured the essence of what we expect the teaching profession to be in Scotland. And he said that we uh, expect that teacher education should address as an integral part the need to build the capacity of teachers irrespective of career stage, to have high levels of pedagogical expertise, deep knowledge of what they are teaching, to be self-evaluative, to work in partnership with other professionals and to engage directly with well-researched innovation. And for me, there's a key phrase in there that, that I haven't highlighted, but it is irrespective of career stage. So this is not just for a beginning teacher, this is what we expect of all teachers for as long as they are in the teaching profession. And when I was at the meeting with the General Teaching Council last week, I presented this uh, paragraph to them and I said that in essence is a professional standard for teachers. We don't need much more than that. We can, we can identify some, some, some key actions below it but that captures the, the nub of what uh, we expect and have, have a, a vision for our teachers in Scotland. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why we feel that we need teachers to have this deep pedagogical knowledge, deep knowledge, be able to work in partnership and so on, because we have embarked on a major programme of reform. And you've heard me before saying Scotland's a small nation with big ambitions and big ambitions for our young people. And so that's part of the focus of, of the systems change that we've been trying to achieve over the last 10 years. We've introduced a new curriculum. We've reformed the teacher education system. We've introduced a suite of professional standards. And more recently, in, in 2016, we've introduced a national improvement framework with a key focus in trying to close the attainment gap between the, 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 the less able pupils and those who, who, who are more able. And our curriculum for excellence is very much focused on building four capacities that we've identified that young people need to live and, and succeed and contribute in the world that Connor so, so eloquently outlined just a few moments ago. And so in Scotland our vision is for young people to be successful learners, to be confident individuals, to be responsible citizens and to be effective contributors. And if that's our ambition, and if that's our curriculum, which is very much focused on outcomes, an outcomes-based curriculum rather than a content, rather than a content-driven curriculum, it raised important questions for us about the type of the teacher that was needed to deliver that curriculum, to develop that curriculum, and so that was part of the reason for the reform of teacher education. As I said, more recently we've introduced a national improvement framework to really focus collectively our efforts in trying to improve the education system right across Scotland for our young people and that's done through a, a, a national improvement framework and you can see there the child is at the centre and that we are working through these different priorities to try and, and ensure that we, we raise attainment and, and make life better for all children, improve the le learning outcomes for all children. So how can we do that? 
in this national improvement framework, we've introduced a number of different dimensions or drivers that we're really concentrating our efforts in trying to bring about change and improvement to, to, to try and improve outcomes for young people. I can't cover all of those today, but the ones that I wanted to just draw attention to was the levers that we're using in terms of developing teacher professionalism, which is seen as part of this. And those levers are teacher education, they are the professional standards, and they are professional update. And that was for the reason that the reason why we moved towards a suite of professional standards that moved us beyond that compliance standard, that legal standard, to try and promote a stronger sense of teacher professionalism from when a teacher enters the profession until they leave the profession. We also tried to strengthen our leadership by introducing leadership standards for middle leaders or heads of department and schools and for, for, for headship uh, preparation as well for new head teachers. So uh, uh, quite an ambitious programme of, um, of change and reform in Scotland at which we see the professional standards at the heart of this change process and uh, within which the standards are conceptualised not just uh, as a, com uh, a means of ensuring accountability and assuring that standards for, for teaching are maintained but also to try and use them in a developmental way. And I've been watching and trying to track the, 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 the emphasis and the, 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 the discussion that has been occurring at the international summits on the teaching profession that have been taking, taking place each year since 2011. And uh, we, Maria, when Maria introduced her uh, uh, keynote earlier in the week, she talked about this emphasis, this real policy focus, this intense gaze on issues of teacher quality. And I think you can see that in the themes of these international summits that have taken place since 2011 real focus on quality, teacher quality and how, how we can actually achieve that and within that standards are, are seen to um, uh, have an important role to play. We were very fortunate in March of this year, just a few months ago, that the International Summit came to Scotland. So all of these ministers of education from high performing systems around the world came to Scotland to, to explore these issues, focusing this year in 2017 on empowering and enabling teachers to improve equity and outcomes for all. This is the document that is available online. All of the documents from the, the summits are available, but this provides a, 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 an overview of the, the key issues that the ministers of education will be discussing. And in this document, uh, we get uh, a definition of how the OECD views standards. And so they view standards as what teachers should know and be able to do, including the description of a desirable level of performance. They are lost sets of documents or, documents or sets of documents with different extensions and scope that state what is valued in a profession through a competence-based approach. And then they go on to define what they mean by competences. They're defined as the ongoing and progressive ability to meet complex demands in a defined context by mobilising holistic psychosocial resources, cognitive, functional, personal eth um, and ethical as needed to accomplish these. Taking Connor's lead about critical and the need for critical discourse around the use of these terms and, 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 the, and the use of professional standards, I think we could really have a, a healthy debate about this. But for, for today's purpose, I just want to draw your attention to the words that are in bold there. And they are not in the original text. They're in bold and they're in italics. They're not in the original text. I've highlighted those because for me, as somebody who works uh, uh, every day with professional standards, the, these are the two things for me that are important messages from these statements. That standards are about what is valued in a profession, what we think matters, what we agree collectively matters. So standards are about what is valued in a profession and competences are the ongoing and progressive ability to be able to meet complex demands. So two important messages embedded within that, that definition from the OECD. 
And that, I think, is important in helping us to try and think about how we use standards and how they're conceptualised and, and, and how they're designed and so on. And here I draw on the work of a colleague from Australia who, who, who is retired now, but has been really quite influential and significant in his work around professional standards, Lawrence Ingerson. And Lawrence had identified through a vast body of research that he has undertaken that there are different purposes for standards. You can see them here to select entrance into the teaching profession, to assess teacher performance, to certify teachers, to make decisions about promotion. And his analysis of, of, of standards, he looks at, at, at three main types, content standards, where we're identifying teachers, describing teaching, identifying teaching, describing teaching, evidential standards, and performance standards. So they can be used and understood in a range of different ways. They can be used as a means for codification, for regulation and accountability. But they can also be seen as a means to try and promote autonomy within the profession, to try and promote agency and development. Um, and so there is a, a, you know, an inherent tension between how ten standards can be seen and how they can be used. And I draw here from an example from Scotland that we have um, at the preface of our Standards for Leadership and Management, in which we clearly say the purpose of this professional standard for school leaders. It is to support self-evaluation and reflection. It's to be used for the design of programmes. It's to be used to, as an assessment framework. It's a template to, do, to plan and enhance coherent leadership development pathways. It's a means of informing the process of selection. It's a means of contributing to dialogue about leadership and management. And then there's a very clear statement. The standards have not been designed as a benchmark of teacher competence and should therefore not be used in this way. In our discussion last week, we decided we needed to change the language a bit to, to, to make it a little, a little softer. We felt that that was very, very compliant language. But the message there is that these standards for leadership management are seen as a means to help teachers and school leaders develop, advance, become more accomplished, but they're not a means of measurement and we don't want them to be seen in that way. That presents challenge because if you go back to that example that I gave you, the head teachers and school principals that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis are still being men measured against that standard for provisional and full registration at the entry level to the profession. I would say that I'm confident in Scotland that we are using the standards in this way, in designing our programmes, in using them for professional dialogue and assessing learning and so on. And it's also true, I've been doing a lot of work with um, the Ontario uh, College of Teachers in recent months, and it's also true in their set of professional standards where they share a similar vision, a similar emphasis on the developmental rather than the instrumental use of professional standards. Oh, let me just... Oh, sorry. And in the, the Ontario uh, College of Teachers, in their standards for professional practice, they share similar uh, ambitions around their professional standards for teachers to inspire a shared vision, to identify the values, knowledge and skills that are distinctive to the teaching profession, to guide professional judgment and actions, to promote a common language that shares understanding of what it means to be a member of the teaching profession. So a real focus on, on, on trying to have a shared understanding, but also to use standards in a, a developmental way. And they, similarly to that quotation that I used from Graham Donaldson, they've adopted a very succinct uh, set of professional standards, the standards of practice for the teaching profession, where they outline them as being cons consisting of professional knowledge, professional practice, leadership in learning communities, ongoing professional learning and commitment to students learning and uh, student, st students and student learning. And so they see these as the key elements of the standards expected of all teachers and then they work very closely with teacher educators to identify what needs to be there, what uh, learning activities, what content needs to be in place to realise these standards of practice. As I said, that there, there are inherent tensions and standards in the way that they can be conceptualised and in the way that they can be used in developmental ways. And there is a danger that there's mixed me messages. 
mixed messages in terms of how they are understood by those within the profession and those out with the profession, by policy makers and also by, by wider society. And this is an issue I think that we've, Connor's already referred to it this morning, that it's tempting to see standards as the solution to all the problems that we have in teacher education. And often within teacher teaching and, 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 and teacher education, teachers are constructed as the problem. If we fix the teachers, we fix the problem. And how are we going to fix the teachers? Well, we'll introduce standards. And it's not as easy as that, and it's much more complex and deeply rooted than that. And yet governments across the world are tempted to just impose sets of standards to try and regulate the profession, and then that will solve the problems. And I would say that we need to go right back to that question that I posed earlier on about the issue of what it means to be a teacher, the underpinning model of the teacher, and to really think hard around that. And in Scotland, we've really tried to do that over the last number of years by reconceptualising teaching as not just uh, something that uh, somebody is uh, awarded a certificate to become a teacher at an early stage of their career, but to really place the emphasis on career law and professional learning and to think of teaching as a professional continuum through which teachers are continuing to develop on an ongoing basis. And that was the thinking and the rationale behind the introduction of this standard for career law and professional learning where we thought that teachers, through their ongoing development, would become that model of the teacher that Donaldson, uh, Donaldson referenced, the adaptive expert, a practitioner inquiry, the career-long leading learner, a critical thinker, a knowledge creator, a collaborative practitioner, a collaborative curriculum developer. Somebody who has the skills and the attributes to be able to deliver and develop that curriculum for excellence that I mentioned. So there's a wish to go beyond compliance, to develop the advanced knowledge and professional skills, to develop as reflective and inquiring practitioners, and to be able to be those curriculum innovators across the education system. Similarly, in Ontario, they are trying to move towards this uh, uh, ongoing professional uh, learning framework for teachers in which they embed the standards of professional practice within a professional learning framework. And they see that professional learning informs professional practice, but it is very much about self-directed self -directed professional learning pathways which are agreed by the teacher, giving them that sense of agency and autonomy. So just before I, uh, I conclude then, in Scotland we've been asking ourselves, well, how well are we doing and how do we know? Um, we invited the OECD in uh, in 2015 to do a review of the curriculum for excellence and link to that the wider changes in the system. In relation to professional standards, they described our professional standards as inspiring. And I'm still trying to work out the subtext there. I'm not entirely happy with that term. I think it's, uh, they could have said more. But the message that they said here on uh, page 126 is important. And it's important for all systems that are trying to adopt professional standards and use them to support the professional continuum. And they said that there is a question of how deeply the standards move from theory to practice and become embedded in the professional culture of the Scottish education system. So they're saying, done good work, but we're not actually sure that the profession is fully engaged with the teaching profession. And we've tried to look at that ourselves within, uh, within the General Teaching Council as well. We've undertaken surveys. Some of our work, uh, based on an evaluation of Teaching Scotland's future, has given us some evidence teachers are more engaged with professional learning. There's a greater focus on the impact of learning for pupils. Teachers are more engaged in professional dialogue. There's a willingness to try new approaches. So we're on the path, but we're not there yet. And that as part of a wider discussion that I've been having with a number of international colleagues, including Rosa and her team here at Kazan Federal University, about the use of professional standards for teachers. How do teachers perceive and understand standards? What's the relationship between standards, professional development and teacher appraisal? How do we secure buy-in from the teaching profession? How do we measure the effectiveness of standards? How do we know they're making a difference? And what can we learn about the conceptualisation, design and implementation of uh, the professional standards? And for that reason, 
I'm working collaboratively with uh, Rosa from Kazan and Maria Flores from uh, University of Minho in Portugal uh, on a multi-country study on uh, professional standards for teaching. Um, and the aim of the study is to look at these understandings of professional standards from teachers' perspectives in three countries. The three countries that we're looking at in the first instance, Scotland, Portugal and Russia. We are based in, basing it on three research sites and they are sites where the current use of professional standards for teaching are at different stages of development. Our aim is that we would have at this stage two sites in Russia, Kazan and, and also St Petersburg in Scotland and in Portugal. And the reason why we focused on these three sites are they offer three contrasting perspectives in the, way, the ways in which teaching standards have been adopted and are conceptualised. So we're at a very early phase here in Russia where the standards are about to be introduced. In Scotland, we would say perhaps we've got a, a, a phase of consolidation where we've got a set of professional standards in place and, and, and are functioning but, but could be more effective. And essentially in Portugal, a model where the standards were rejected by, by the teaching profession. So we, all, we think that offers a really interesting contrasting perspectives. And in all of the sites, uh, we are using an online questionnaire. It was originally developed and piloted in Portugal, developed by, by Maria and uh, Shirley Van Newland. And once the online questionnaire is completed, we will come back and we'll be using uh, regional focus groups to try and explore the themes at a bit more depth. In Portugal, the online survey has been completed and uh, we had uh, just over uh, 1,300 responses. In Scotland, the online questionnaire is live at the moment and so far we've had 904 responses. And in Russia, well, we're planning on launching it quite soon. And there's a bit of competition. It's a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest here. So I'm just, I want to beat Portugal. So if you know any Scottish teachers, encourage them to complete the, the questionnaire. We know already from the data that we have, both quantitative and qualitative data, we're getting very interesting perspectives on how teachers are engaging with professional standards, how they feel they should be designed, how they should be implemented. And we feel that as a result of the work that we're doing and taking this, this agenda forward, we're getting a better sense of the ways in which we can really use professional standards to support teachers' ongoing career-long professional learning. And I hope next year to be able to be in a position that we can come back and share with you some of that very rich data that we're already beginning to see. Thank you very much.